Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about solar thermal power generation. So let's dive right into it. Well, first of all, what the heck we are talking about? We are talking about using sun's heat to heat things up. Basically, you would be like, isn't solar panel does that? Well, technically, no, simply because solar panel does take energy from sun, but it utilizes a very narrow spectrum and basically it does not like heat. So you may think, okay, I'm going to put in a bright sun daylight. Actually, it will produce less power because it heats up. So for this reason, solar panels, while they are quite effective, they do not utilize full electromagnetic spectrum. However, in a heating system, as long as you can focus the energy into one place it does not matter whether it's microwave ultraviolet infrared or uh, optical spectrum it does not matter if you can concentrate it it will heat things up and you're gonna get energy out of it so that's all we do we use sun to heat something up and what after that okay you got it hot what after that we run a normal thermal power plant because if you're familiar with our uh, energy production you know for a fact that almost everything is a thermal power plant be it coal be it natural gas be it nuclear it's just thermal power even geo, uh, geo uh, basically geothermal power plant that those are also thermal power plant so once we have the heat converting that heat into electricity that's the easy part now because sun is not a static source it's not like a reactor you know where it is and tada it's like that it moves so you need something that can track it either the receiver have to move around or the mirrors generally people move around the mirrors uh, so these mirror uh, track the sun. Now here's the deal. sun moves in two axes. You cannot uh, like you can try to do this with a single axis because you may think like okay sun goes from here to here. That's true in day to day basis. But here's the deal. In seasonal basis the sun direction will go from like this in winters and in summer it will go on top of you. So there is a uh, axis to this also. You you do not have to like okay. This is one axis that's more than good enough that will give you the most advantage but if you really want to run a power plant you want to extract every single uh, you know light that you can extract out of the sun so you will also track seasonal basis so that's why generally tracking is very important for solar thermal systems so how the heck it works well the thermal part is quite simple but concentrating is the main point basically we have collectors that concentrate allows us to concentrate sun's energy because sun is giving uniform amount of energy almost all over the earth's surface so you let's say you take one meter square that has energy but here's the deal if you can concentrate that one meter square into let's say one centimeter square now you're talking now you have a lot of energy basically you must have done this kind of experiment with a magnifying glass sometimes mirrors or whatever have you you must have done this kind of experiment so this is this uh, basically concentrating experiment on much larger scale basically megawatt scale so one design is solar power towers basically you have giant tower and a lot of small mirrors which are flat they do not have fancy curves they are simple store bought again technically not store bought but you get the idea you can make this out of your uh, home if you want to so these are statites and they track sun into axis and they are designed in such a way that light bounces onto the tower tower collects the energy and runs the steam power plant generally which is situated in the base so that's one architecture. Another architecture is uh, parabolic troughs. Basically, you have a channel, uh, channel kind of thing, and this parabolic design in such a way that all the energy is focused into that small area. Again, okay? one meter square, one centimeter square. So you get a lot of oomph out of this. And generally, there is a working fluid there that will collect the heat. Because again, if you just keep focusing on that, uh, that much heat onto glass, it will break. Metal, it will break. So generally, you have to have something to kind of cool it. So generally, cooling, uh, basically, uh, heat extraction fluid itself is acting as a coolant then another design is also there but it is not as widely popular as that but you could see them and I have provided a video down below which is dish base now dish base could have two structures basically they could have like all these dishes powering a small unit and that unit is acting as a larger unit or you could have completely independent unit uh, depending on your requirements sometimes people want independent unit basically let's say you bought the land but you ran out of money because land is expensive and you're like okay we're just gonna put one unit and then we're gonna sell the electricity slowly once we start to pile up more money then you're gonna buy more units so that time you will have something like this a complete dish so these are the workings of it generally you just have fancy way of collecting solar energy depending on your design depending on your land availability you will choose one of these three now there are other designs but these three are the most popular one now what are the pros of this well it's simple now when i say solar panel is simple inherently simple to you and me basically we go to the shop we buy a panel we connect it to inverter 
tada electricity we don't have to think too much about it and we don't even have to think after we bought it but here's the silicon is a god level technology is is a freaking magic somehow it takes photons causes electron to jump a gap and then creates electricity I'm like what the hell you have to have multiple layers of phd in order to understand that on top of that there are very few countries who can ta- tangibly manufacture in mass scale and you know which country can it actually do that so reality is even though technology is simple manufacturing is so complex that only few places on this planet can do that heck for example india is uh, is building huge solar farms as in like huge ludicrous huge and we have to buy inverters from israel so you can understand that even though technology is solid state the technology needed to make those puppies are expensive this is completely different this is a simple technology if you can make steam engine you can make this heck this is so simple literally we do this in a small scale in our school labs so it is simple technology Techno- like it does have lot of things but complexity wise it's ludicrously simple you can make it then uh, that itself is not that attractive but the most attractive part is that if you know what you are doing you can send the uh, basically solar thermal energy into a thermal battery generally it's salt benefit of that is salt can melt at high temperature and it will retain that energy for a very long time while not being under pressure because you technically can do that with water also but here's the if you want to heat water up to 400 degrees celsius or 500 degrees celsius which is generally done in a power plant your pipes go from okay 1 mm thick wall to one you know this big thick walls just to make sure it does not go boom and yes steam under the high pressure when it goes boom it takes other things with it so you do not want things to be in high temperature plus high pressure so salt allows you to bypass the pressure part it's like it's on high temperature it's going to burn you instantaneously if it touches you but here's the it's not under pressure so your wall is not like holding on for dear life so all the thermal energy goes into this uh, basically thermal buffer you can call that and depending on how much your energy you are extracting this can act as a battery and at that point you will reach 24 into solar pa- uh, power Yes, you heard that right. Twenty-four into seven. Again, you have to uh, calibrate it properly. So let's say for six hour you are getting one megawatt. Uh, you have to design in such a way that output would be like the grid output will be of course one sixth of that, but that will twenty-four into seven basically. And you can even throttle it down. Let's say for during night time power went down, uh, load went down too much, and you have to shut it down. You do not want to send power in a grid when there is nobody to buy it. You will destroy it. So that can be done. So that is very very attractive to grids utilities basically. All all. to every country they are like dude solar power that works 24 into 7 what more could you want and depending on the location choice you may not even have to think about uh, rains because again most of them are situated in desert they wouldn't be desert if there was rain continuously so these are the pros of it simple technology and if you know you, what you are doing with salt you can make it 24 into 7 so that has the amazing aspect of it but what are the cons well engineering's first principle complexity is the enemy of reliability it has lots of moving part basically you see these towers the tower itself looks simple and it has only like you know one or two fluid channels going up and down and all that not too complex so here's the each of this mirror have two access tracking system basically reflecting sunlight Yes, dude. How many of those are there? Thousands of them. That means thousands of bearings that you have to manage. Thousands of motor you have to manage. Thousands of motor controller you have to manage. That inherently has a lot of moving parts. On top of that, that inherently means you have very high maintenance cost. Solar farm uh, in photovoltaic region, you put it, you forget it. You don't think too much about it. This puppy, you have to have like a whole um, small army to keep maintaining it. It's not something put and forget. You have to maintain it. And anybody who has worked with bearings, they are like, yeah, don't work with bearings. It's like they are very sensitive, especially in a desert area they are like ludicrously you know diva like so to say and they are very hard to scale up so in solar uh, panel technology you buy a inverter that converts your dc power into ac power and then you send it sell it to the grid here's the how do you add more to it you just buy another inverter it's no not complicated you can do that and heck there are stream inverters that allows you to chain it up like you can buy 1 megawatt unit and then add like you know to 200 megawatts without any issue you can just scale it up with current in- equipment so if you build a substation that is like for selling you build a substation so it can sell very large amount of electricity and you keep adding solar panel as you want here you have to make sure the thermal part is done correctly on the first day and then you can slowly add up uh, the mirror part but again because of how steam works and all that jazz they will not start up at very low temperature so let's say you designed a power plant that is uh, let's say 100 megawatt it must be at uh, around 50 in order to actually spool up so you can understand it does not scale well basically you have to build it from day one it's like this is how it's going to be you have to build it so these are some cons with it now what about the future 
well solar pv have won flat out game over it has already won because world's biggest solar uh, farm there is like on the planet it's in india there is in uh, bagda solar power plant uh, power plant has in it's around 2.2 gigawatts as in 2245 megawatts of power it's so huge you can see it from satellite it's like it's huge but here's the it's simple as you can see these things are simple they do not even have tracking all they have is like tiny robots that keep cleaning well, again this is in desert so you have to keep cleaning it regularly or otherwise like you know it dust will pile up and reduce efficiency so they have like smaller robots that just you know keep dusting it every day so inherently flat out if you want to make big solar farm because this is india's a uh, step one so to say there are other steps that are being worked on right now as we talk to you and like by 2025 it should be done that is 20000 megawatt let that sink in 20,000 megawatt power plant is being under construction. Like it has already become under construction. This was phase one. So, total PV has won. There is no discussion about it. Like in terms of uh, basically cost matters. At the end of the day, it's cost. How much uh, electricity you have to uh, basically cost of per unit of electricity. That's it. Solar uh, thermal is not that efficient. However, if somebody figures out the thermal battery part, many people will buy a thermal battery system rather than the solar photovoltaics. While it is awesome, while it is powerful, it's not suited for, let's say, a small community. Let's say you want to just power a small community and you do not have the luxury of, hey, I have a coal power plant at a backup or a gas power plant, which are very quick to turn on and off. You don't have those luxury. You want 24 into 7 power. Salt systems are much more effective. Thermal batteries are uh, key here. So if somebody figures that aspect out, and given the fact that technology is simple, you do not have like hundreds of patents who are going on and like you know if something breaks it's like yeah go to another country to find a part to fix it uh many for many big places that are like that's desirable so if somebody saws that uh, thermal battery it could change the game like it right now you could and you might be like can't we do this with the same with uh, solar photovoltaic no same problem will occur because solid state battery be it lithium ion li um, solid sand is like physically solid uh, lithium ion batteries or lithium titanium they have another issues of themselves like where the heck the lithium is gonna come from silicon is abundant lithium is not so Future wise, solar PV powers uh, backbone, I can easily see. However, if somebody figures, truly figures out, as in like, yeah, I'm gonna sell you this power plant and it's gonna work 24 into seven, again, with some margin of error because it is sun we are talking about. Uh, and like, with reliably you can sell because early power plants they have been very poorly received They're like yeah this is 40 megawatt once they started it's like barely getting 20 megawatt once they sort out those kind of issue there's a lot of potential there especially for small communities like dude we're just gonna have this in desert and it's gonna power our small community 24 into 7 we don't have to think about it that's awesome so there is a future but all of that relies on thermal system so this was my presentation on solar thermal power plant. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me a disappointment, and please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.